Hi, in this uh, little demo, I'll take you through how to get started writing Ruby programs on your Windows machine. The first step is to download the Rails installer Ruby and Rails kit. Next, we'll see how to install the Ruby Rails installer kit on your Windows machine. We'll then write a small program using Notepad. And then we'll run this program that we just written using Ruby inside our Rails installer Ruby environment. Go to railsinstaller.com. Click on download the kit button to download the file. Once the download is complete, please click on the railsinstaller.exe file that you see at the bottom and that will start the installation. The downloading will take a, a little bit of time so you should just wait for it to complete and then click on this. Another place to view all your downloads is this uh, button here on the top right that you see. If you just click that, you'll see a list of all your recent downloads. So you could click on this link here as well to commence the installation process for your Rails installer. and that should commence your installation process. The installation may take a while, so uh, just give it some time. Once installation is complete, you can actually now start the program as shown here. And a command line box will appear here, a black box where you can type in commands in the Ruby uh, Rails environment. Now ignore the top part of this uh, black box for another part that says username and version and so on and just focus on the part at the bottom that says c colon backslash sites. Now that refers to the directory path or the folder path where you are located in in your command prompt at this point. Now um, all files in your computer are organized in folders and subfolders and I suppose most of us know that at this point. So in this uh, particular box uh, we have the c drive. Uh, which is like a giant folder and within that we have the sites folder that has been created for us by uh, Rails, Rails installer and we are within the sites folder. You can check out the Windows Explorer as well and you'll see within the C drive this folder called sites. Now if you just click inside that, uh, that's where we are at right now. Go back to the sites folder in the command prompt and uh, we can check out all the different files and folders in the sites folder by typing the command dir which stands for directory and just lists all the directories and folder uh, directories as is just another name for a folder so the dir command lists all the folders and all the files in the sites directory now in the sites directory or folder, we want to create a new folder called learn Ruby. So to do that, we use the command mkdir and that is short for make directory. So go ahead and type mkdir space learn Ruby. Now be sure to have learn Ruby be one single word. You don't want a space there. So it's mkdir space learn Ruby. Now that we created this new folder called learn Ruby, we now need to move into that folder and the way we do that is by typing cd space learn ruby cd stands for change directory and so you type cd space learn ruby now go ahead into the windows explorer um, and click on the learn ruby folder and inside that we are going to create a new file called first.rb first.rb is going to be a text file so that's what you need to select here um, and we're going to open it using notepad we're going to name our file as first.rb please note the .rb part that is an extension of the file that determines what you can do with this file if you call it .txt 
then that's a regular text file but if you call it dot rb then that's a ruby file that contains ruby programming instructions so you should rename it as dot rb Here I just want to point out one little thing. Sometimes your file could be named at first dot rb dot txt. So basically, even though you're calling it, you're giving it the extension dot rb, uh, your Windows operating system might still assign it the extension dot txt. So you got to check for that. The way you do that is by going to your um, your command prompt and typing dir. And if you see that your file is actually called first.rb.txt then you should change the name to first.rb um, as uh, as follows you change a file name by using the command mv mv stands for move um, so it's uh, basically you're moving the file called first.rb.txt to a file called first.rb and that's just uh, another way to rename the file so that's what we're doing here type dir again and just list the files to make sure the file that you have uh, renamed has indeed been renamed to first.rb and is not at this point called first.rb.txt go to explorer uh, right click on first.rb and open with notepad we want, we want to we don't just want to double click on this file we want to open this file with notepad because we want to edit this file using notepad now we are ready to type in our first program that consists of exactly one line and that is put as space hello world within quotes um, what this line of code does is it puts out the string called hello world and we'll see in a moment how that happens but just go ahead and type this for now inside your notepad and save it after having saved the program we can now run the program or execute the program to do that go back to the command prompt and type in the sentence ruby space first dot rb what this does is it asks the Ruby um, compiler or interpreter to run your first.rb file and produce whatever results that your first.rb file is supposed to produce. And when you ran your first.rb file, you saw that it just printed out hello world and exited. And you're back at your command prompt. You can now type in dir just to make sure that uh, you know uh, your directory does indeed contain the first.rb file whenever you create a file it's a good idea to just type dir and verify that that file has been created in the appropriate way so that's what we did here if you want to modify this program you can go back to first.rb and edit the program in notepad as shown here After editing the file, you can save it. You can save it as the same file or you can save it to a different file name. If you save, if you click save as, then you can change the name of the file and save it to a different file if you want. <clears throat> or you can click on file save to save the file uh, as first.rb itself. And after saving the file, you can come back to your command prompt and run the program or run the file by typing in Ruby space name of the file. So that completes our little um, hands on demonstration on how to um, run Ruby programs on your Windows machine.